Hello viewers. Um, I am back with another video update. I haven't updated you guys in three or four months and because of some recent things that have happened, I definitely think that it was time for one. The last video that I made, I was about two years post surgery for um, some pretty intense pelvic organ prolapses. So all of my pelvic organs, including my rectum and my vagina, were prolapsed in the third degree, there's four degrees. So in order to fix that, my vaginal surgeon, um, who I fully trusted, I've talked a lot about that in my other videos, um, suggested a hysterectomy. He did because of my age, which at the time was 37, he did leave my ovaries intact, but everything else was removed. Um, I also had a complete pelvic reconstruction um, using native tissue repair. So essentially that means all of my, prolapses were fixed without mesh. So he did not just go in, put mesh uh, slings and kind of hold everything up. I was stitched internally from the inside, stitched on the outside. Um, I had a sacrospinous colpopexy, which took my vagina essentially and stretched it and tied it to the sacrospinous ligament near my tailbone. Um, I also at the same time had a TBT sling put in to support um, some stress urinary incontinence repair that I was having. So I was having a lot of stress incontinence when I was coughing, jumping, laughing, sneezing, anything like that. And so he put a very, very tiny piece of mesh that was just holding up my urethra uh, to fix that. So in my last video, I was two years post-surgery. I am now two years and three to four months post-surgery. Um, I just wanted to update uh, some of the things I talked about in the last video. Specifically, I talked about how I had been facing some, some symptoms, some physical symptoms and some mental and emotional symptoms that I really could only chalk up to hormone issues, but that at the time, my blood tests weren't really reflecting that. It wasn't showing that I was having hormonal issues. Um, in my last video, I explained that my doctor had given me a very small dose, one milligram of estradiol orally. Um, it was obviously synthetic estradiol that I was just taking in pill form once a day. So in that video, I had said that I really wasn't feeling better um, and that I was gonna have to decide what to do about that. Was I going to continue to pursue other um, routes of fixing that? Was I gonna kind of just give it some time or just see what I thought? Well. Shortly after making that video, my symptoms got so intense that there was really no ignoring it at that point. So um, some of the more serious symptoms that I feel like I was having was extreme fatigue, intense headaches. I have, uh, sorry, I have a two-year-old in the background. I'm trying to keep him quiet. He's <laughs> playing on a tablet, but here we go. Um, so intense headaches. I occasionally would have migraines previous to this, but this was like, day after day migraine that my migraine medicine was not able to fix. Um, and if it was a day I was lucky enough not to have a migraine, I definitely had tension headache like every day, all day, morning to bedtime, didn't seem to matter. Um, never f feel rested. Um, I was having intense brain fog, like legit felt like I was losing my mind. Couldn't remember why I would go into the next room. Couldn't remember things that I did yesterday, what I was gonna make for dinner. Half the time, literally confusing my kids' names all the time. I um, would struggle with words. Like I felt like I couldn't think of the right word, couldn't come up with the right thing to say. Like I was just getting so frustrated with my mental fog. I felt like I was losing my mind or like getting dementia or something. It was very scary. Um, I also had like no energy for workouts, which had never been a problem for me. And I had some intense joint pain. Mine specifically was everywhere in my neck and shoulders, as well as my head. Like I felt like I had a lot of tenderness in around my head, but my entire neck, my shoulders, all of this was just like so painful all the time. And I'm like, what the heck? Even when I would take breaks from working out, even after sleeping, even after taking ibuprofen, stretching, it didn't matter. The joint pain just was not going away. Those were some things that I couldn't ignore or explain away physically, but then I had some other things. I was also incredibly irritable. I mean, like 
mom rage to the nth degree, just like losing my cool over the smallest things, every little noise bothering me, um, just super pissed off all the time with really no explanation. I mean, having headaches 24 seven, that didn't help, but it was just like the worst irritability that I had ever experienced. I had no libido, um, like no interest in sex whatsoever. I mean, and, and for the first time ever in my life, even when I could get myself interested, get in the mood, I was having a very hard time like um, finishing or enjoying it or it being enjoyable like it used to be. So that was a big thing for me that something was going wrong. I was having these um, intermittent hot flashes. It wasn't every single night. It didn't seem to matter how low I dropped the temperature in the room or what I wore to bed or just sleeping with a sheet. I just was waking up in the middle of the night drenched in sweat. It was starting to happen to me during the day. I was also having like a lot of blood sugar issues. Like I would kind of feel my blood sugar spike and then I would feel my blood sugar drop again to a hypoglycemic state, which is something I have dealt with almost my whole life, but it seemed like it was picking up intensity. Um, I also was having a lot of like dry skin. I started to feel like my hair was getting very dry. There were just a lot of symptoms that were just so weird. But when it got to the point that this was impacting my household, like my family, my marriage, I, I was like, okay. I was tearful all the time, like super emotional. And none of these things are like me. So I requested an appointment with my doctor and I said, look, the estradiol isn't working. And she said, well, maybe you need some testosterone. Like sometimes women need testosterone. So we did some more blood work and lo and behold, um, for the first time, the blood work showed that my hormones, testosterone, estrogen, DHEA, progesterone, all four of those major hormones that are frequently checked, tanked. I mean, you could see on a graph, you know how you can like look at your graph of, of how your hormones have been over time when you've had the test done. Mine were literally like since 2021 when I had my hysterectomy, straight downhill. Um, I wasn't in like the red range of the blood test at this point, but I was right on the cusp of where they consider that like to be uh, disease state, like very concerning. And here's the thing, <laughs> I, I just, the amount of research that I've had to do to try to help myself has been crazy. But when those blood tests say you're normal, that's often not normal for you or it's definitely not optimal for you. And what's normal for me at not even 40 yet, being the same normal for a 70 year old, that's, that's just strange, right? So my doctor was like, even though you're not in the extremely low disease state, according to these blood test guidelines, this is, this is not good for somebody not even 40. This is not optimal. This is why you feel like crap. So um, luckily I have a gynecologist who's pretty well versed in hormone therapy, or at least more than some that I've found. And again, in my reading and my research, what I'm finding is these gynecologists, they're not trained in most cases about hormones or hormone replacement therapy. They're only trained in how hormones affect women during pregnancy or during um, fertility struggles, like trying to get pregnant. But honestly, they don't know a whole lot about what happens past that, past pregnancy. Um, and they have to seek out their own research and their own knowledge about perimenopause, menopause, all of those things. So it was pretty obvious that I need some hormone supplementation. Now, my initial thought and hers as well was, okay, you had the hysterectomy. Unfortunately, in some cases, hysterectomy, even with the ovaries left intact, can lead to what we call ovarian failure. Because the ovaries are no longer connected to the life cycle of, you know, fallopian tubes, uterus, all of that, they just kind of start to die off. They don't feel like they have a purpose anymore. They kind of shrivel up. They stop producing the hormones that they're supposed to, and they stop working. So that is what I thought was going on. That was, um, you know, makes sense, right? As I started looking into this further, I found out that that may not be the full picture. Now, do I think that it's probably what's going on? Absolutely. However, if I sat here and told you the story of what I've been through in my life the past couple of years, you would likely agree with me that there have been some stressful circumstances, potentially even some traumatic circumstances, and definitely some emotional, um, 
trauma that likely could be causing some of the things that I have going on. So I wanna talk a little bit more about that. But first, let's talk about what my doctor is trying to do for me. So I have been for about six weeks now on a hormone cocktail in the form of a trochee, okay? I had never heard of a trochee ever. Essentially what a trochee is, it comes in these little packs like this. You can see like I'm due for getting my new pack soon, but I also have some put into a little um, Tupperware container I keep in my bathroom. But what these are is compounded bioidentical hormones. So I'm not a doctor, so I don't like giving advice, but based on the research that I have done, if you are seeking hormone replacement therapy, you want to be looking for bioidentical hormones, not synthetic, not ones that you just take orally. There's a lot of reasons for that. And I could probably make multiple videos, I might, about what my research has led me to believe about the right type of hormone replacement therapy. These are trochees. What I am taking a trochee of is a combination of various forms of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA, because according to my blood work, as well as my symptoms, my doctor feels that I need replacement in all four of those. Another thing I didn't know is how important testosterone is for women. Like we actually need testosterone about as much as men do. Not the same amount, but we only think of testosterone related to men. Like, oh, they need testosterone to be manly. Well, women need testosterone to feel womanly, to have a libido, to feel sexy, to have um, nice skin, to keep our mind clear, um, to sleep well at night. That's another thing I didn't mention. I was sleeping terrible, like couldn't fall asleep. But if I could, I was going to wake up three times, four times, five times. I don't know. It's like I couldn't even keep track. I don't have a Fitbit or anything, but I knew I was waking up not rested because of how many times I was tossing and turning and waking up at night. So progesterone helps with that. All right. So I've been on this for six weeks. I take it once a day in the morning. And she said that she started me on a pretty conservative dose, especially of the testosterone, because if you go too intense with testosterone, you can kind of flip the coin and you're on the other side of the spectrum. And you can get too high levels of androgen then, which can cause like, you know, some more manly symptoms like excessive hair growth, things like that. I don't want that. So we're going very conservative, especially for this initial dose to figure this out. But, um, I didn't immediately feel anything, which was a little bit of a bummer. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna start taking this. I'm gonna suddenly like always be in the mood. I'm gonna feel great. I'm gonna have all this energy. I'm gonna sleep like a baby. It hasn't been like that. And I think that's normal. It takes a while for this to get into your system. My doctor even said to give it at least a full two months before we were even gonna talk about any changes. But I am about six weeks in now. And what I have seen some improvement in is I do have a little bit more energy. Within two weeks, those headaches stopped. I still occasionally get one, but it was not like back to back, day after day headaches. So headache improvement, um, a little bit more energy. I'm probably sleeping a little better. Still having a little bit of the night sweats, which is annoying. Um, I'm also having some relief of joint pain. So my neck and my shoulders feel a lot better. Not perfect yet, but a lot better. I have a little more energy for working out um, and I am definitely less irritable. So that, those are some improvements I've felt already. I have an appointment with my doctor at the three month mark of taking this. That was my choice. She offered two months, but I felt like what I've read, I really wanna give my body three months on this to see how I'm doing and then be able to clearly say to her, here's what has improved, here's what, not ha ha what has not improved and her be able to then make suggestions. I just felt like two months maybe wasn't enough time. Um, so medically, that's how we're seeking support. And I absolutely think I needed this based on what my blood test was showing and the concern that my ovaries have stopped producing the right amount of hormone. That being said, because I never just rely on what the medical community is telling me, I always do my own research. So I came across this woman on the internet. I found her first through like social media and then started watching some of her YouTube videos. But her name is Dr. Taz. And she is a specialist, an expert, like well known for her research on hormones, specifically female hormones. And she has a newer book out called The Hormone Shift. I will put a link to this in um, the description box below. But she, this book is amazing. 
I honestly bought the book because I thought I'm just, I just want to know like what she says about hormones and like, does she agree that this is what's going on with me? Would she think that this is related to hormone failure or what would she say? And she has so many excellent suggestions in here for maybe before going to hormone replacement therapy, trying some things naturally to do some liver detox, to add some healthy vitamins and minerals that uh, and foods and nutrition that might help your body reset itself. Now, if you're in a state like me where your ovaries are not producing really any hormones anymore, this ain't gonna work for you. Like changing your diet is likely not going to fix the problem. However, if I can start implementing some of the suggestions in her book along with this therapy and make myself feel even better, or maybe once we get my hormone or my ovaries kicked back in and like, I don't know, maybe, maybe at some point I won't need that anymore. I don't know. Would I love to be able to fix my issues naturally? Absolutely. But I was in such a state of feeling miserable that even Isaac, no, that even if I had found this book before going to this, I don't think I would have wanted to take the time this might take to naturally address some of the issues. I needed help and I needed help in the form of medicine. So I am on the healthiest way that you can go about hormone replacement therapy. Again, not a doctor, but I may make a separate video on why I chose this route along with what my doctor um, suggested. But, sorry, I'm back. Had to take a little break and help out my little guy. So again, if I can work with this, which has some natural ideas, and this medication and get to feeling my optimal best, then that's obviously what is the best plan. Um, her book talks about not only the importance of nutrition and what we're putting into our body, but also some things that we're doing that are causing our body to have dirty hormones. So I hadn't heard that phrase, but essentially a lot of the things that we're eating, a lot of the things we're putting on our body, are um, hormone disruptors that are confusing our body and making our body think that it has more estrogen than it does or sometimes it's causing us to have estrogen dominance um, or low levels of certain things to high levels of certain hormones um, she also talks about other hormones that we don't typically think about like cortisol and what cortisol does to our female hormones so it it's just a very interesting book and i'm not typically like how do i say this oh <laughs> like a woo woo health nutritionist like oh food can fix everything supplements can fix everything no i'm not normally like that however i'm not fully convinced that what's going on with my hormones is just because i don't have that maybe my or ovaries aren't functioning anymore i think it could be because of some buildup of some things in my system it could be because of some you know, emotional and stressful events that have happened in the last two years and my body is storing a lot of that. She talks about that in this book as well. So if you are experiencing hormone issues after a hysterectomy or not after a hysterectomy, that's another thing. So many of us approaching 40 feel like crap or we feel like something's missing or like we don't feel like ourselves anymore and we just accept what a lot of doctors are telling us that is you're just getting old like everybody starts to feel that way when you're getting old or maybe we need to put you on some birth control just to regulate those hormones or you just have anxiety or depression here's a pill but in reality what's happening is nowadays early and earlier women are entering perimenopause before menopause average menopause age is 52. perimenopause can start happening in your 30s 30s so here i am on 39 and I don't know, like, am I just in perimenopause or are my ovaries failing? I don't know. Or is it because I, I've got a bunch of toxic overload in my body and my liver is struggling and my um, microbiome is bad? Like, I don't know. It could be a combination of all of those things and that's why I want to try to address all of it. But what I would say to you guys is um, perimenopause is real. It can be in your 30s your hormones start changing, your ovaries slow down a little bit, they're not producing as much as they should be. We got all this stuff in our system that's making us produce too much of one thing and then the body sees that and it's like, okay, well we have enough of this and now we're not gonna produce this because we don't think we need it, but in reality, everything is just out of whack. 
and the band-aid fixes that so many doctors are putting on is just infuriating like it's not what we need so many of us just need our hormones regulated whether you choose to do that naturally give that a try naturally or whether you try to go to some medicine a good form of medicine like you're not going crazy it's your hormones and that's that's what our book says like balance your body and thrive through life and menopause um and one of her big statements is, you're not going crazy, it's your hormones. Ladies, I legit felt like I was going crazy. Like, legit, losing my mind. Do I feel 100% better? No. I hope that I have at least like 50% margin of getting better on this medication as I adjust to the dose, or maybe we have to up my dose, I'm not sure. I, I do not feel optimal for me. But I feel much better than I did two months ago. So I know that this hormone therapy is helping me and that I needed it. Um, so I just encourage you to keep advocating. I talk about this in so many videos, advocate for yourself. If you feel like crap, if you have no libido, if you feel like you're losing your mind, you're super irritable, you feel like you have PMS all the time, you have terrible headaches, you have body aches, joint pain. It's not normal. At almost 40 or even 50, you shouldn't feel like you're 80. So get yourself some help. Find a good doctor. If you're gyno, is just trying to give you anxiety pills, depression pills, telling you you're fine, telling you this is part of getting old, you need to find someone else. You need to find someone that specializes in hormones. But, and I need to make another video about this, do not start going to these people that are just doing pellet injections. It's becoming a new fad to go out there and get injectable hormones in the form of pellets. I need to do a different video, not for this one, but it's not good. That's not good, too much, too much at once, too much not dose specifically for you. And once that's injected, it can't be taken out. So you're stuck with it for three to four months if it's making you feel worse. So I'll get off my soapbox on that. Maybe I'll make a new video, but Dr. Taz has videos about that. If you don't wanna go buy her book, um, just check her out on YouTube, Dr. T-A-Z. And I'm not endorsed by her in any way. In fact, my channel, is not endorsed in any way. I make no money off this channel, um, but I just really wanna help you ladies. So especially after any form of hysterectomy, if you're feeling like you're having some hormone symptoms, you need to go get it checked out. But even if you haven't had a hysterectomy, you can be in perimenopause and feeling like crap and you just need a little bit of help. Don't let yourself go crazy. Don't let your marriage go down the toilet. Don't let your family go down the toilet because we all know that if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So you gotta get yourself the help that you need so that you can take care of the rest of your family. All right, I've said this before, again, I don't make any money off of this channel, but the more that you like, the more that you subscribe, it drives, um, it drives viewers to my videos so that they can get this information. I hear from you guys every day about how helpful all of my videos about my surgery have been. So I want to provide the same help and information about my hormone struggles as well. So please like, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Um, and then yeah, check out this book. All right, thanks.